Welcome to List Week, guys. It's the end of 2019. That means it's time to look at all of the best music, all the best songs, all the best albums that have been in the country music world this year because I think 2019 was a really great year for country music, actually. But before we can get into all that, I want to knock this one out. This is the video I'm least excited about, but will get the most views. And it's the worst country music of 2019. Now, I'd love to be one of those people that only shines a positive light on things that are good, but... That's ultimately not what anyone's really looking for in criticism. People want to know when things are bad if they're bad, when things are good if they're good, to line that up against their own taste and say, you know, does this person see the world the same way as me? That's the whole fun of kind of following the music conversation. And so long as you do both, so long as you say things are good when they're good, then I think it's fine to say things are bad when they're bad. And with that said, let's jump into the worst country music of the year. And you know what's coming first. You know what had to be the main song featured here. You know what was the worst country song of 2019. I got the horses in the butt. Just kidding. I'm not even going to include Old Town Road in this video because when all the brouhaha had ended, when all the bandwagon outragers had put down their pitchforks, you really didn't have anyone left that really felt passionately that Old Town Road was a country song. I think everyone saw the whole stunt for what it was, and the song became a big hit and rode the whole controversy to record-breaking success in the pop world. There's a whole video on this channel about country trap if you want to know my opinion of genre and why it actually matters. If Old Town Road did teach us anything though, it's that Nashville is very protective of its own reputation. They're very suspicious of outside forces making any waves within the country music world, and they like to control the narrative. So once Old Town Road was off the chart, Nashville gave us the get up. Yeah, apparently this is what country music needs. A sad, narrativeless offshoot of the cha-cha slide that features Blanco Brown atonally calling out dance instructions over a hip-hop beat laced with the faintest amount of twang. Also, thirsty high schoolers can go viral on TikTok long enough for the mainstream media to get their news anchors to do fun dance segments and your Aunt Carol to try to keep up at a wedding reception. But hey, it was put out by a Nashville label, so let's put this on the country chart. Quite frankly, I would have rathered Old Town Road be on the chart. At least that had some semblance of a narrative, even if that narrative was just, I want to ride my horse down the Old Town Road. And speaking of roads, then we had Dustin Lynch's Riding Roads. Riding roads don't go down. Look, we had the bro country era for the better part of this decade. We had years of songs about guys wanting girls to slide on up in their truck so they could go drive and bone in a field. And now we're onto the boyfriend country era where all the radio boys are telling the girls, you're so sweet and I love you and I'd never hurt you. But Dustin Lynch's last few singles just merged the worst parts of both of those trends. And the result is not him being a macho douchebag and it's not him being a tender vanilla bean. It's him being just sleazy sounding. Out there where the moon hits the water I mean, Riding Roads is just the latest song after Small Town Boy. She's my laid back in the front seat. After Seeing Red. Back, see, heart beat, in my chest. Where he's got a girl driving beside him, and he's a weird mix of super laid back and super horned up at the same time. It's like a pubescent boy that smoked pot and drank a Four loco at the same time. And it's always got this overbearing R&B pop groove to it. I'm just like, where's the Dustin Lynch that did Hell of a Night or Cowboys and Angels? Those were good. What happened? I don't know. And speaking of bro country, could someone please let Brantley Gilbert know that the era is over? Because he keeps dropping songs like Fired Up, which just ends up sounding like Fart Up. This song is loud and stupid. It's got all the brass knuckles, all the wallet chains, all the machismo and idiocy that made the bro country era sad instead of any of the fun that made the bro country era fun. Because sometimes it was. It's just hollow. I have to mention Chris Jansen's album, Real Friends. If you ain't got anything good to say, then shut yo mouth. I freaking hated this album because it feels like it was made for a focus group. It's the type of music that a corporation like Verizon would commission to play as the waiting tunes on their customer service phone line in hopes that all the bland positivity would somehow quell the angry customers. I got a good girl, she got a good smile. I kiss a good morning, I kiss a good night. I'm not kidding, these songs are as generic as something in a Disney Channel original movie. I mean, we've got a song called Real Friends. We've got a song called Good Vibes. We've got a song called Normal People. An anthem just about being normal. I'm normal. Me too. Me too. 
then there's so much southern lifestyle pandering, whether it's Country USA or Beer Me, which is a weird song for an artist that doesn't drink, or most egregiously, God's Gotta Be a Good Old Boy, which, newsflash, he's not. Baddest bitch in the game. Diamonds on our neck and wrist make it rain. The Zach Brown Band also made a terrible and misguided album called The Owl, which features almost nothing that made you fall in love with the Zach Brown Band in the first place. Someone that I used to know. There are a few good moments on there, but by and large, we've got really sad songs like God Given. To the middle, it's the way your hips ride a little devils. It's a small of your back. It's a fantasy land. Which finds Zach rapping about Veyron whips and Gucci bands. Or tragic songs like OMW. When you see that about getting real excited when you see a text that says OMW, and in case you didn't know, that means on my way. The chorus tells you over and over again. How do you do, fellow kids? Zach Brown ended up doubling down on this album after it was widely rejected by pretty much everyone. I am not just a country artist. Yeah. I'm not. And released his own album called The Controversy. He didn't release this as a country album, so I won't include it here, but it is very bizarre. It features this song Swayze that has him saying bitch over and over again. I can't be your Tom Cruise, bitch. I'm Patrick Swayze. And overall, I'd just say it's a lesson in how not to respond to a divorce. And then we gotta talk about Alcohol You Later by Mitchell Tenpenny. It's alcohol, alcohol, alcohol you later. This is a song about making a drunk booty call, and beyond the fact that it is the exact same concept as Mitchell Tenpenny's only hit, Drunk Me, Alcohol You Later is just not a good song. The pop production on this is at like Keith Urban graffiti U levels. And, I know sober, and the John Mayer breathy vocals just kind of make my skin crawl. And speaking of artists that I don't get why they don't just make pop music, let's talk about the rise of the country boy band that's happening right now. Because this year this band King Calloway came onto the scene and suddenly all these high profile articles were being written about country's first boy band. The group was assembled from the UK and the US and of course one of the members fathers is a very powerful executive that produces the CMA awards. And now the band is kind of backtracking and saying, you know, we never called ourselves a boy band. But while I'd really love to hate them, they have not released any music that is truly offensive, just really blah. However, their fellow country boy band on the outside is definitely making up for it. She was sweeter than sugar cane, singing along to purple rain. Look, I don't really know where these guys came from. Apparently one of them was a model, some of them were aspiring musicians, and now they're being pushed as a country boy band, and where country music comes into this sound, I'm not really sure. I mean, I guess the idea that they said Tennessee in the chorus is qualification enough for some people. And I don't know about you, but I'm really okay with country music not embracing choreography. And then we've got the girl group Avenue Beat that's putting out songs like Delight. I'm a freaking delight. I'm a freaking delight which again fall into the category of why not just release this as pop music? Look, I get the Gen Z vibe that these girls are going for, trying to come across cool and casual and confident, referencing Taco Bell, saying that they're fine as hell. But ultimately, it's just really shallow. And no matter how much kind of doodly graffiti art you throw on all of their videos, it doesn't feel young and cool and fresh and organic. It feels really produced and overbearing. I don't know what Big Machine's whole idea is with them, but I get the sense these girls are good at harmony, good at writing songs, and they're just wasting it on this crap. I also really dislike the song Hell Right by Blake Shelton. Hell right. Hell right. Hell right. The song has a very unpleasant structure to it. There's almost no flow, and nobody says hell right. Hell right. not a phrase that I've ever heard anyone say in real life. So to build the whole chorus around it is hell wrong. And if you watch any performance of this that actually has Trace Adkins, you can tell he's not happy to be there. Of course, I gotta mention Swerve by Florida Georgia Line. Making me swerve. Making me, making me swerve. I think there's a lot to like about Florida Georgia Line's latest album, Can't Say I Ain't Country, but Swerve is not one of those things. This is like a club anthem that didn't need to exist, especially on an album that's kind of bragging about how country it is 
in the title. And I don't know which line I dislike more in it. I'm a two step up to you with that booty and them pants or the way you roll in with that body feel like I'm in a Bugatti, but it all just feels a little trashy and I'm gonna swerve away from it and go to songs like Blessings or Told You or Speed of Love. There are a few really good songs on that album. There are a few other songs I really didn't care for this year. I thought Knockin' Boots by Luke Bryan was just so boring and pretty annoying and repetitive. This truck needs a half tank. These I didn't enjoy Kinfolks by Sam Hunt. I'm like, this is your big comeback. Don't Threaten Me with a Good Time by Thomas Rhett and Little Big Town. Girl, was just, I thought, an atrocious song on his new album. No one's here for that disco beat. But I have to end this video with a song that really disappointed me, and it's Rival by Lanco. Now, I stuck my neck out for Lanco last year. I made Greatest Love Story the number one hit song of 2018 because I was really charmed by it and by this new band that I didn't know much about. But I don't know what happened as Lanco started to gear up for their next album and put out this song. Rival is like a cross between the anthemic inspiration of Kings and Queens by 30 Seconds to Mars, the pop twang positivity of I Love This Life by Low Cash, the sing-along vibes of Hey Jude, and the misguided everything of Kendall Jenner's Pepsi ad. Add all that together and you just have a mess. The structure of this song is just so weird and it makes it really hard to remember any discernible hook. And it all feels like it owes a lot more to British arena rock than it does to country music. Lyrically, it just amounts to a bunch of Instagram memes about waking up, rising and grinding, getting after it in life. I'm the one that you heard about. Every penny that I get, I earn. Ever since I was young, I caught my own path. The lead singer says, if you ain't with me, you're a rival. And look, I'm not with you on this song, but I'm a rival? That means like, I'm someone that you're competing with also? Like, if I'm not with you, you should just forget about me. But it kind of weirdly elevates the people that are against him. All in all, I just didn't get this song and I was so disappointed because I was so excited to hear what Lanko was coming out with. But hey, I'll keep listening. I like bands that take chances. I think Rival was a big swing and a big miss, but that's more interesting than just playing it safe and making the same exact song as every other dude on country radio. So that was my worst country music of 2019. Like I said, I think overall, it was a really good year for country music. I think country did a lot of work remembering what makes it special this year, kind of reverting back to some of the sounds and instruments and storytelling that made us all fall in love with country music in the first place. But hey, there's always going to be some bad music. And in my opinion, this was it. But I'd love to know what songs you think were really bad in 2019. And hey, if you liked any of these songs, feel free to defend them down in the comments below. But for the rest of this week, we got best albums, we got best singles, and we got best songs that were kind of minor hits or album cuts that are still coming up. There probably won't be a video on Christmas, but otherwise expect a bunch of content this week. I love you guys. Thanks so much for growing the channel. Um, if you're new here, feel free to hit subscribe. I'd love it if you liked this video or shared this video. And I'll see you guys with more stuff very soon.